In this video, we will be creating the hit event. So that way, when we hit our target, it's going to go ahead and get destroyed and we will be notified of it appropriately. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So a lot of the things you're going to find in this series will be abstracted as far as possible in order to keep things as modular as possible. If I was to add an event on my enemy, just on my enemy, for example, to determine if it was hit, that event is only going to work on that enemy. I'm going to have to know the name and the, or the class technically of the enemy whenever I hit to see if I can actually call that event. And it's going to cause a little bit of coupling. That player is tied directly to that enemy for that hit event. So to get around this, you use blueprint interfaces. It's a way to abstract things, allow you to give modularity, and allow you to easily change things all at once. So let's go and do blueprints, new folder, and we'll create interfaces. And we'll go ahead and create our first interface. So we're going to create one for the enemy. So we'll do blueprints, interface. I'm going to call this BPI underscore enemy just so that way when I'm searching for them it's easy to know it's a blueprint interface and it's appropriate for what it is. And we'll open it up. Now the blueprint interface is really simple to use. We just have a function name. This function is going to basically be on anything that uses the blueprint interface and allows us to easily access other things. We'll go ahead and call this the was hit. And this is what we're going to use to determine when the enemy was hit and what we're going to do when the enemy was hit. So it's pretty simple. We're not going to need anything extra here. That's actually all we need to do for the BPI enemy. Now we need to actually make sure our enemy implements it. So we'll go back to our enemy. We'll go to our class settings. Implemented interfaces, currently none. We'll add blueprint interface enemy. And now our enemy can implement the was hit event. So what do we mean by that? Well, it's pretty simple. If we type in was hit, we will find add event was hit. Now, if we go ahead and save that, we'll actually have to try that again. Was hit, there we go. Add event was hit. And it is not cooperating. So what did we do wrong here? BPI enemy, okay, let's see what we did wrong here, shall we? BPI enemy was hit. Yep, yeah, that's right. Maybe I didn't save that one. That's a possibility. There we go. There we go. So add event was hit. You'll notice through all of that it was trying to add it, but the problem I noticed was down here where it says from BPI enemy. That wasn't showing up. You have to save. I created it in here, but didn't save and compile, which means the enemy which implemented it, didn't know it existed, which means it wasn't working right. So once I actually saved and compiled my B blueprint interface, added it to my enemy, and then save and compiled, now I have the appropriate was hit. So now whenever this event fires, it's going to go ahead and do something. And where this is going to be pretty simple. We're just going to destroy the actor. We want to make sure this actually works. Now, what do we mean by calling the event? Well, this is pretty simple. We already have a hint hit event that we know works. If we go to our player and we go back to our line trace, we already saw based on our debug type that it was working. Whenever we shot something, we saw it getting hit and we saw the little green line changing over. So based on that, what we're going to do is if we have the target hit by the line trace, we're going to tell it to call the hit event. Now we're not going to tell it to destroy itself or add points or explode or do particle effects. We're just going to go ahead and say, hey, you go ahead and you handle whatever happens when you were hit. And that way each enemy can do it differently. They can do whatever they want. Or the nice thing about blueprint interfaces, if that event isn't even there, let's say we want it to be a wall that for whatever reason is an enemy but we don't want it to be affected by being hit right now maybe we want it to explode later we could actually just have that event do nothing and nothing will happen so let's set this up 
Now from our line trace, we have the hit result, which if I break this apart, we're gonna go ahead and see this big old monstrosity of stuff. And then we actually have the return value itself. Now the return value is what we care about right now. We're just gonna do a simple if. We only care if we hit something. Now in our case, we're always gonna hit something because I wanna make sure we can hit every corner of the map to make sure we can hit every target. But if you're in an open world and maybe you want your gun to only shoot a thousand centimeters, for example, or a thousand units, you wanna make sure it's actually gonna hit something before you do something with it, or else you're gonna to try to do something with a false. So if we hit something, what are we gonna do? Well, our hit actor is what we care about the most. So let's go ahead and promote him to a variable to make him easier to work with later. So we're gonna call him the hit actor. And basically this allows us to not have blueprint wires running everywhere, it'll make it a little bit easier. Now what do we wanna do when we hit this actor? Well, we have an interface called BPI enemy. On our enemy, if we hit something that is an enemy, we wanna go ahead and call our event was hit. And the nice thing is it's super simple to do. We just take our hit actor, we type in implement, and we have does implement interface. We go down to BPI enemy, which I think I passed, there we go. And then we do another if statement, and we go like this. And now, if what we hit implements our BPI enemy interface, we can be sure that it is something that has a was hit event. So we go over to true and we take our hit actor. This is why we made that a variable so we didn't have a line going here and a line going here and we tell it was hit. And you'll notice on here it'll say was hit message and it'll say it's of class BPI enemy. That's what we want. Let's go ahead and hook this up. Move a little redirect node and that's it. So what's going to happen here is if we hit something save the hit actor, see if what we hit implements our interface. If it does, tell it to do the was hit. Now, if we go into enemy, if we do was hit, it'll destroy it. Let's see if this works. Let's see if I can actually shoot this, shall we? Grab our gun, turn our controller back on because it shut off again. Go ahead and fire, and I'm horribly, horribly aiming. Let's go down. There we go. You'll notice I hit it, it disappeared, and you can barely see it, but you can see where the red and the green, uh, the hit point was, where it went from red, which is our line trace, our hit point, which was a red square, and then a green line going through where our hit was. So that's pretty much it. As you saw there, now I have it set up. Now, if I want something to happen, once this enemy is hit, I apply it into here. And in here, nothing is going to happen if it's not something to implement. So when I hit the wall, this false branch will fire and nothing's going to happen right now, which is exactly what we want to happen. So that's going to wrap up this video again. And I know I keep saying so because for some reason, I can't think of another word to segue into another sentence. Our next video is going to cover a basic scoring system. Now that we have our hit event working. Let's go ahead and set up a score value. Let's go ahead and create up some more interfaces to keep track of our score. And we're going to go ahead behind the scenes and implement a scoring function.